Hi, this uh, first uh, YouTube video is um, about remedy absorption. And just to put that into context, pharmacokinetics is the study of how the body deals with therapeutic substances in terms of uh, absorption, distribution and metabolism. And in, in part one, um, we'll be looking at the absorption remedy of remedies the routes of administration and the factors affecting absorption. And then uh, in part two we'll look at the uh, absorption uh, with respect to bioavailability of uh, therapeutic substances and also the distribution of them. And then finally in part three we'll look at the metabolism of remedies, how they're broken down and got rid of from the body. So. Um, Remedy absorption, um, we're uh, looking at the different ways, initially we'll look at the different ways in which remedies are administered to the body. So oral administration just means giving the remedy by mouth, it doesn't necessarily mean it's um, absorbed in the mouth, but that's the, w the way it's given to the body. We could also give uh, remedies in non-oral ways, so either via the skin or the, the rectum, under the tongue, sublingual, the injections into the bloodstream, which herbalists hardly ever do, and um, vaginal administration is another possibility. So, talk about oral administration. Um, we, we, we think of taking in the remedy and then absorbing it on a kind of, sort of physiological level. Um, pharmacology looks at that at a level of cells, so ultimately any constituent of a herb is, in order to get into the body, it's got to be absorbed somehow across the cell membrane of a cell. And there's three main ways that this can happen, by passive absorption down a concentration gradient, by facilitated diffusion where a pore opens in the membrane and allows diffusion to take place, um, or finally by active transport where energy is expended to transport the substance against a concentration gradient. In this diagram it's showing transport outside the cell but th that will equally take place in the other direction if the cell deems that there's a uh, small amount of goodies on the, on the outside and it wants them inside the cell in higher concentration. Um, so we'll go into that in a bit more detail later. So looking at passive absorption first. This takes place down a concentration gradient. Um, it works for lipid soluble in very small molecules, so un unglycosylated flavonoids, coenzyme Q10 for example, simple phenols. These will all easily pass through um, the cell membrane if uh, this concentration difference across the membrane. So uh, logically the rate of absorption will um, be proportional to that concentration difference. So if you have a big concentration difference across the membrane the absorption rate will be quite fast you know, um, and uh, you know if there's not that much difference on either side of the membrane then absorption is going to be fairly sluggish, fairly slow. Likewise, absorption rate of a given chemical will depend on its solubility in lipid. So you can influence how much of something is absorbed by influencing its solubility in lipid, which uh, we'll um, show a, a bit later on. Facilitated diffusion is the next way that uh, substances can pass across the cell membrane. This is still a passive process. Um, a molecular pore, um, usually a protein, provides a polar tunnel to allow diffusion through the cell. So this is going to be polar molecules, not not necessarily only lipid soluble. It's, it, they probably have non-polar hydrophobic uh, elements to them, but they've got a, a certain polarity that means they're attracted to the the um, polar environment inside this, this pore and that means that uh, the, the molecules are coaxed through the pore 
and but this only takes place if there is again concentration difference between the two. So this is called a facilitated diffusion because its diffusion takes place when the pore is open. Um, this will hold true for water, in which case the process is called osmosis, movement of water molecules from a high water potential to a lower water potential. Uh, vitamins like thiamine and riboflavin are absorbed in this way, and many conventional drugs, uh, the water-soluble ones, will be absorbed in this way. And finally, active transport. Um, this takes place against the concentration gradient. It's carrier medi mediated against, tra again, transmembrane proteins, uh, but it requires energy uh, because, uh, because instead of uh, exploiting the, the downhill trend of the molecules, the downhill sort of desire of the molecules to, you know, uh, get to the bottom, um, uh, you're pumping against the tide, as it were. So this requires an energy usually provided by ATP. So um, uh, glucose will be absorbed in, in, in this way, vitamin B12, iron and uh, calcium. So th that act of transport, as I said, requires energy, but the, the, the rate at which it uh, proceeds uh, will depend primarily it will be proportional to the number of carrier molecules expressed by that cell. Uh, and of course the cell can um, make and, 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 and use uh, carrier more carrier molecules as necessary. So if the, if the, um, um, sh if the sugar um, content of the, of the gut lumen goes up, then the number of carrier molecules uh, to help transport that sugar in will will increase. So administration through skin. This is the first of the non-oral administration methods. N lipid soluble constituents are really quite easily absorbed through the skin, um, and that absorption rate is increased by anything that occludes this th the skin. So, um, if you uh, put on an application on the skin, then cover it up with a dressing, or if you use an oily ointment, then that will speed up absorption. Also, if the skin is punctuated by f features, so sweat glands, hair follicles, sebaceous glands, um, injuries in the epidermis, that 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 um, allows channels in for constituents to be more readily absorbed. So the corollary of that is that we have to be very cautious with open wounds because uh, open wounds can have a very high absorption rate um, if you apply uh, remedies to them. In some cases you can get a comparable absorption rate to injecting the substance straight into the, the veins. So that means that you've got a high risk of sensitivity, allergy, or even toxicity. So when we're making skin preparations for someone with an, an open wound, then we have to avoid saponins, hydrolyzable tannins, and sesquiterpene lactones, because all of these can set off sensitivity, al allergy, and toxicity. Um, Rectal administration can be used sometimes, make up a suppository and obviously uh, you've got a local indication in direct treatment of the, of the rectum, maybe for piles or something like that. But you might also want to uh, make suppositories for something uh, that, that is really quite a nauseating remedy and, and maybe if somebody's got a dodgy stomach or uh, uh, traditionally uh, uh, it was a uh, standard route of getting medicines into children was giving suppositories rather than sort of trying to persuade them to open their mouths. Um, absorption from the rectum is variable. Um, generally speaking, whatever is absorbed doesn't diffuse up the gut, the gut lumen, uh, so it is uh, absorbed or not across the the bowel wall, the the, the rectal wall. 
Uh, but of course absorption will be impeded by the presence of faeces. Advantage of suppositories is that they bypass the effect of digestive enzymes. So if, if you've got something that you want to have an effect on the body but you know that it will get chomped up by the digestive enzymes so it, uh, it won't be absorbed intact then you can give it as a suppository and it will go straight into the, the bloodstream. Uh, because it also bypasses the portal circulation. Um, uh, so, uh, as you know, the, the hepatic portal vein drains blood from um, all the um, inter internal organs from, from, from the gullet down to uh, the large intestine, but not from the actual rectum. So, um, anything absorbed in the rectum will uh, go into veins that go straight to the heart um, and then thence into the systemic bloodstream. So that means that you've, you haven't got the protective or activating effects of liver metabolism because you know some um, therapeutic agents need to be modified by the, by the liver before they can actually be pharmacologically active. So that's the pros and cons of um, suppositories. Giving something under the tongue sublingually um, is sometimes uh, uh, a good strategy. The mouth lining is very highly vascular. There's a lot of blood supply there, so high rates of absorption are possible. You know, um, uh, once something has crossed the the mucous membrane of the, of the mouth, it get, gets straight into uh, copious capillaries and then sent to the systemic circulation so again not going to the liver but straight into the systemic uh, system um, so bypassing digestive enzymes and bypassing the portal circulation so it's a very quick way to get get certain substances into your into your body parenteral injection parenteral just means kind of parallel to the to the gut so instead of going through the gut uh, using the gut you're using a parallel system um, of administration um, so usually this means direct injection into the bloodstream this is hardly ever used by herbalists incidentally if you read um, uh, Thurston's book uh, the philosophy of um, um, physiomedicalism he talks about um, uh, a sanative um, injection of, of herbs, a sort of uh, vaccination with with herbs, um, but I I've, I've don't know anybody who's used anything like that. So again, direct injection bypass the digestive enzymes and port circulation, but there's a high risk of sensitivity, allergy, or toxicity. Vaginal administration um, parameters similar to the mouth lining, highly vascular, and again bypasses the, um, uh, if you like, defence mechanisms. So, what sub factors will um, affect gut absorption? Well, uh, the rate of gastric emptying, obviously, this will be increased by fasting, anxiety, antacids, and an overactive thyroid. Gastric emptying will be slowed by hyperacidity, pyloric stenosis, and peptic ulcers. And gas gastric emptying is faster for liquids. Um, so the the faster that things get out of the stomach and into the intestines, then the faster they'll be absorbed. Presence of Food in the gut lumen will slow down absorption, but it won't block absorption. Um, uh, other substances in the gut lumen can inhibit absorption. So, if, for example, phytates in cereal might bind iron and calcium, make it unavailable. And the likes of iron and manganese compete with each other for the same transport mechanisms. So that can um, change absorption rates. Um, and I'm out of time.